Mr. Speaker, I want first of all to thank Honorable Naluima for raising this matter. And I don't know, Mr. Speaker, why the ministry, these ministers on their own, deny this parliament information. You see, and each one of us here has an issue to raise, Mr. Speaker. But hadn't it been for Honorable Naluima to raise this through a matter of national importance? I don't know when the minister had planned to give parliament this information. Mr. Speaker, sir, that having been said, I want to know, first of all, uh, if it is not prudent for us to rethink this exercise. First of all, uh, even before we talk about renewal, a number of Ugandans have not accessed the first registration yet. They have not got the, the IDs, but the, we are talking now about a mass exercise to do the renewal even before each and every Ugandans procure an ID. Two, Mr. Speaker, sir, when you hear the presentation of the minister, it gives you a feeling that Mira is just beginning. It has it, everything. They are procuring everything. They are going for training. They are doing everything for the first time. So it, it is even difficult to believe that this institution has been around for some years now. And even some of the things for which they need money are very basic, Mr. Speaker. Sorry to say so. Two, the issue of local government's involvement. It is high time, Mr. Speaker, that we, we revisit the issue of decentralization. The Constitution, Article 176, provides that for whatever we do, we shall develop the responsibilities and the functions to local governments in an organized manner. Some of these matters would be quickly handled and in the best way by local governments. But you see that NILA is over-centralized. That is why the minister was saying that the local governments better take interest. Whereas they would have been the implementers because they are the governments that are near the people and know their areas better than any other institution, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, banks have already issued us with warnings uh, that with the expiry of our IDs, that will make them hold our accounts. I don't know if that time comes and the IDs are not ready. What the minister is trying is planning to do uh, for institutions that will consider our IDs expired, including courts of law. And lastly, Mr. Speaker, every other day. We, 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 we increase the role of the ID. For students now, the new education policy um, introduced uh, the recording of results for national examinations from the day a student joins senior secondary. And those results are recorded on somebody's Nini number. Where a student does not have a Nini number, the student is required to provide the minimum number of the parent. So it, 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 it appears that the ID these days is more important, is, is required in so many areas than we had originally thought about. And I think it is high time we, we draw a proper uh, distinction between the voter's ID and the national ID, because it doesn't pro mean that every citizen of Uganda is a voter. Yet every citizen of Uganda is qualified for national ID, including children. So we cannot page the issuance of a national ID to elections because voters are voters. And you know, uh, there was a colleague who was saying that we had told the people to boycott the registration. There is a difference between boycotting re the registration of voters and then the registration of citizens for the purpose of the national ID. And I think, Mr. Speaker, we should do, draw a clear line between the two. Lastly, when, 
one one thing mr speaker oh, oh no number no, that you don't do it that way you request without switching on the microphone you know there are rules which i'm following here much like on our colleagues just I, i'm i'm thinking about other colleagues because what? i have other statements just conclude there quickly honorable as i conclude thank you the shadow speaker. minister as i conclude last week we had an exercise in mokono it was a show of go back to school and nila was registering people for ids now today we are talking about uh, renewal so what is the purpose of the continuous registration when there is a, a provision that every 10 years we shall be renewing one of those exercises is redundant and for me the exercise of mass renewal of ids is redundant and it is high time this parliament thinks about withdrawing it you know taking you know rethinking this exercise mr speaker it is very expensive and it introduces a responsibility that is so costly to the country yet it is redundant thank you mr speaker thank you i, I think honorable minister you will need to clarify whether the biggest push is because you're introducing a new total new id with integrated futures and the new systems you know which can provide more services so, so that we bring everyone on board honorable uh, nachimuri thank you mr speaker thank you minister for that statement um honorable right honorable speaker we have had illegal immigrants into the country um and they use there is a there is an island next to kalangala from tanzania they come into the country and uh and they get um ids actually they come during that time of ids i don't know who informs them but they come to the country during issuance of ids they get our ids and they purport to be ugandans and yet they 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 steal property of people in kalangala they steal uh, fishing nets. They even kill our people. Recently, uh, there were two fishermen who were burnt. They wanted their fuel. They wanted their nets. They refused to give them the, the nets, and they burnt them. And one of them survived. He's the one who told the story. So we have this issue. I think you should take it up, especially when issuing national IDs. And also, uh, Mr. Speaker, they talked about. He talked about. Um, issuance of generators to especially hard to reach areas mr speaker we have had an issue we the islanders are told that government property does not cross the waters to go to further islands because i hear there is insurance and all that so i want you to confirm to us are these gener are these generators going to cross to the deeper islands because i have 84 islands the islands in buvuma about 54 but uh, government only looks at the main island where the district headquarter is. They put their property there. Mr. Speaker, for reference, we got an ambulance for Chamos or sub sorry, constituency. But we asked for a ferry to, for, for this to be taken. And the ministers, uh, and the person we asked said, no, we have to inquire from the minister to see if government property can go there. But the ministry said it is supposed to go to Chiamos or constituents. And I'm wondering, because people in Chiamos are also pay taxes, they need to get the services. Thank you. So are these, um, uh, are these generators also going to go to the islands or they need insurance to stay at the main island? Thank, Thank you. you. Now, this is.